If you haven't caught this series from the beginning, make sure you go back and watch the previous episodes so you can get caught up and find out exactly how we got here. The ball is where a lot of our logic and a lot of our efforts actually going to have to go to this to make sure that it's moving at a speed. When it hits a paddle, it bounces off and has additional speed added to it. And then finally, if it crosses the goalposts, what actually happens? For our game, we'll add in a new node for the ball, but this time, instead of using a static body, we'll use a character body because this gives us some additional built-in functions for the actual movement. Just like everything else, we'll rename this to ball and we'll need to give it some additional nodes. In this case, we're going to go with a texture rectangle. This is going to allow us to adjust the texture from an external PNG or an external source if we wanted to. Or if we wanted to have a bunch of options for the ball, we're going to be able to set that here with the texture rectangle. We don't have those quite yet. So rather than setting a new image texture or anything, we can use a placeholder texture. This is just going to give us this nice magenta box. We'll want to add a size to this. So inside of our layout, inside of the transform, we can set this to say 10 pixels by 10 pixels. This is going to help shrink it down so it doesn't take up the entirety of our screen. Now, just like with our static bodies, we're going to need to put in a collision shape. So just like we did previously, we can add in our collision shape. We'll create a new rectangle shape. And we'll just set this to the same size as our texture rectangle. Now, like we had with the paddles, we'll need to just adjust our texture to be centered. So just like we did before, anchor preset, and we will center it. So now we have this ball here that's going to be in the correct location. We'll also want this to start off centered. So just like we did with the center line, we can take the balls transform and we can set that to 1152 divided by two. That's gonna put it in the middle. And then we'll wanna put that Y to the same 648 divided by two to put it dead center of our screen. This means now that when we hit play, we're gonna have our ball that starts off in the middle and now it's time to have it actually do something. And that's something that we're going to have it do is going to be defined by a script. So we can attach a script and it's going to extend our character body 2D. So we're going to have all those great built-in functions that we want because we have a character body. Just like before, we want to define a couple of variables. We'll grab our window size, but this time we're going to want to do it as a vector too. So we can just store both the X and Y inside of a vector. We'll also define a couple constants. So we'll say our constant is going to be the start speed. This is an int and we're gonna set this to say 400. So our initial starting speed of the ball is going to be 400. We'll also want to define an acceleration value that whenever we hit a paddle, it's going to adjust. So we'll call this acceleration, make it an int, and we'll set this equal to 50. So ultimately what's going to happen is that speed is going to increment by 50 every time a paddle returns the ball to make the game a little bit more challenging. And then finally, we're going to have our actual speed be an integer. And we're going to have our direction of the ball be a vector two. So we can set our X and Y vectors, put them in together, and that's going to define our direction. And that's more or less all of our global variables that we need for the ball so we can actually start working on the scripts. We'll start off with a ready function. That all we're going to do is grab our window size like we did in the previous example to where we're going to get our viewport rectangle dot size. That's going to store that window size in our vector inside of that variable that we can call whenever we need to down the line. And then we're going to want to define a function for actually spawning our ball. Because right now we just have the single ball that's going to start in the middle. But what happens once it goes off screen? How do we reset it back to the beginning? 
we're going to call this our spawn ball function. Now, it's a bit of a misnomer since we're not actually deleting the ball that's going off screen. We're just going to be resetting it. But as far as the end user is concerned, this is all we need. And for this, we can take our position dot x is equal to our window size dot x divided by 2. So we have our position of our ball in the x direction is just going to be the dead center of our window. We're then going to get our position y. And we can set this equal to the window size dot y divided by 2. So when we spawn a new ball, it's going to spawn in the dead center of our screen. And then we're going to actually do something. Before we do anything, though, we'll want to set our speed equal to the start speed. Basically reset it back down to that initial value. And then we can set our direction. To keep things a little bit neater and organized, we'll want to create a new function here for setting our direction. That set direction function is going to have a local variable called new direction. And this is going to be equal to a vector two. The new direction dot X is going to randomly select either the left or the right hand side to start pushing the ball. So after goal, we're going to either send it towards player one or our player two that's going to be on the right. So we can just specify this as either a one or a minus one. And we just want the system to pick a random value there. It's going to be one or the other. We don't need too much to it. Now in the Y direction, we're going to want to have a little bit more variance to it. So we can say new direction dot Y. And for this, we're going to use a random float, but a random float within a range. And we're going to say between minus one and one. This equation is going to take our random range of minus one to one, pick a random float value, so decimals included, and then set that equal to the new direction dot Y. And then finally, all we have to do is return our new direction, and we want to normalize that. Now, normalizing is going to just set it to a unit vector or a vector that's scaled to one. Now that we have that returning something here, we can then use our direction is equal to set direction. So now when this spawn ball function gets called, we're going to reset the position of our ball to the middle. We're going to set our speed to our starting speed, and then we're going to use our set direction function to set the direction. The final thing I want to add to this script is we're going to leverage the physics process built in function. This is going to allow us to do calculations, use delta to help control for the variance and frame rate inside of our game. All I want to do here is use the built in move and collide function. And we're going to take our direction. We're going to multiply that by our speed. And we're going to multiply that by delta to again, to make sure that we're not worrying about the different frame rates. The only problem with this though, is when I hit play, nothing actually happens because we're not actually calling spawn ball function for us to call that spawn ball function. There's really two things I want to do. The first thing I want to do is add a script to our game node. This is just going to allow me to control things at a very high level. And I also want to add in a ball timer so we can add a timer in here. This timer we're going to set to be a one shot. I want to start it at half a second and we'll auto start that. The last thing is I'll just say ball spawn timer. And then we can use this to actually call our function. The one nice thing about timers is inside of it, they have built in signals, specifically the timeout signal. So that means that once this timer ends or runs out of time, times out, we can do something with that. So we can connect the timer timeout. We're going to connect it to our top level game script, and it's going to be on ball spawn timer timeout. 
This means that on ball spawn timer timeout, we can do something. And that's something we're going to do is grab our ball and we're going to use the spawn ball function. This now means that when I hit play, after half a second, the ball is going to actually move. But immediately we're met with one big problem, and that is that the collisions don't actually work. It just sticks directly to my paddle. If we keep playing this and we see it go up to the top of the screen, again, it just sticks to our world boundary. For something simple like this, this is an extremely easy fix for us. And that's all going to be done back inside of our ball script. Inside of our physics process function, we can do a couple things. The first is we're going to create a new variable called collision. And we're going to set that equal to the move and collide that we were using previously. Then if we detect a collision, so if the collision exists, we can grab the collider from that. And that's just going to be a very easy collision dot get collider. So if a collision exists, if we hit something with our ball, we can then get the object that it's actually colliding with. What we want to do is if it's a player, if it's one of our paddles that we're controlling, we want to make sure that the speed increases by our acceleration value. So if collider is equal to, and we can just grab our player paddle, then we're going to say speed plus equal our acceleration. If it's a player paddle, we're going to add our acceleration to our speed. And then finally, all we need to do is set our direction to direction dot this built in bounce function. And we're going to do this based off of the normal of our collision. Now, if we hit play and we just wait for it to come in a direction that it collides into something, we can bounce directly off. If it's a player paddle, it's going to add in our acceleration value. If it's the wall, it's just going to bounce off and keep going. 